Hello everyone, Louis here, let's talk C-Sharp. In the last video, we had a discussion around classes and defined that they are blueprints that tell my program how to create objects. Perfect! We also instantiated our first object. Now we have to talk about constructors. What is a constructor? A constructor is a method. And if you're looking at classes, you should know what a method is at this point. If you don't, that's fine, I have a video on that, so pause this and go check that out before you continue. Okay, so, like I said, a constructor is a method, but it's a very special kind of method. It's one that tells the application how to instantiate your class. That is why it's so important. And I should say, constructors aren't something new to us. We actually have worked with constructors before. Let's take a look at this example here. What I did here was, I instantiated the person class. This new person, that's me instantiating that class. That is also a constructor call. Constructors always have to be called somehow so that objects can be created. Now, of course, sometimes we can actually see the constructor call, sometimes we can't. That's because we're either using some framework or design pattern that hides that kind of implementation from us. In any case, in order for objects to be created, there must be a constructor call somewhere. In our case, it's right here. As we can see, there's another constructor call down here as I need to instantiate a date time object for my date of birth property. When you look at it though, there's a difference between these two constructor calls. One takes in a few parameters, the other one does not. That is because, much like method, constructors can come in a variety of configurations. Whether it takes in parameters, and what those parameters are, that's for you to define. So, how do I define a constructor that takes in parameters? That's a great question, let's take a look at the syntax. A constructor is an integral part of my class, so I have to go back to my class definition and say public person string name, for example. So, let's take a look at what we have here. First, there's the public keyword again. We know what that does. That means my constructor is public. It's accessible outside of this class. In other words, programmers can call this constructor to create a person object anywhere in this app. Now, the next question is, why should I even bother declaring a constructor? And the answer is, is that you're not really obligated to have one. But, constructors are useful in many situations. For example, I can use my constructor to enforce initialization logic. That's logic I need to put in place for when objects are created. For instance, let's take a good look at this constructor again. I see that it takes in a string parameter, name. Now, let's think about this for a second. If a programmer is using this constructor and passing a name value, that is probably a piece of information that I need to save somewhere, right? Also, that probably means that my string value, whatever it is, should be routed to my name property. That's a person's name that my constructor is receiving here. So how do we move this value to the name property? Simple. All we have to do is say this.name equals name. And that's exactly what I mean by initialization logic. I'm initializing this object's name property with the value someone passed in to my constructor. Now, of course, initialization logic can get very complicated. This is a simple example because we're taking baby steps to understand what's going on. Now, let's take a look at this constructor. I have a line here that says this.name equals name. What does that mean? The keyword this is an object reference. It's a reference to the very object that's being created by this constructor. So when I say this.name, that's a reference to the very object that I'm creating. I have to say though, in C Sharp, the use of the this keyword is not mandatory. In fact, your code will work just fine without it. I would say that most of the time, people will not qualify properties with this keyword. However, in my opinion, it's good practice. It makes your code 100% explicit. It's easier to read easier to work with and ultimately more sustainable. Great, 
we have a constructor now. Perfect. Now let's take a look at how to use that constructor. Let's say I want to create another person here, say John. So I can do person John equals new person and I'll pass in a string John. Now look how beautifully that string value goes into my constructor. This is only possible because I have defined a constructor that takes in a string parameter carrying a name. That value will be moved to this object's name property. That's what I programmed it to do. C Sharp is smart enough to figure out what constructor to use based on what you're trying to do and what's available inside the class. That's how nice C Sharp is, it's taking care of all that for you in the background. As you're writing code, it's gonna look at your code and go like, okay, he's trying to call a constructor and pass in a string. Let me see if I can find a constructor that takes in a string in that class. And then, boom, there it is. Next step is, it's gonna take that string value that you're passing in and it's gonna store it inside the very object that you're creating. In this case, John. Specifically, it's going to store that value inside John's name property. Now, there's a bit of an issue here. This error wasn't here before. What happened? Yeah, that's a little tricky. The answer is default constructor. The thing is, if you do not provide any constructors in your class, then C Sharp will give you one free of charge. C Sharp is such a great language and it's going to take care of that for you behind the scenes without even bothering you. It'll assume that if you've created this class, that's because you're gonna use it to create objects. C Sharp is okay with that and will support you by providing you with this thing called default constructor. It's still a constructor though. The thing is, it's just invisible to us. Remember, C Sharp is taking care of that in the background. So it's there, but we can't see it. It's implicitly defined. Now, if I decide to go ahead and define a constructor of my own, then C Sharp will not give me a default constructor anymore. That is exactly why I have this error here, because now I no longer have a constructor that takes in zero parameters. To fix that, I have to define one. So I'll go ahead and say public person and there it is. As you can see, the error is gone. Also, as you may have noticed, yes, I can have multiple constructors in my class. In fact, I can have as many constructors as I need. Each constructor is an option that I have as a developer as to how to create an object. In my person class, I now have two constructors, or two options to choose from next time I have to instantiate this class. Now, can you have initialization logic inside that constructor too? Of course you can. All constructors can have initialization logic in them. I can have initialization logic here and also here. Alright folks, I hope this makes sense. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. You can either ask in the comments or send me an email if you prefer. I'll be happy to help. See you next time.